In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that have gravely sinned in, in my thoughts and, and in my words, in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who choose what is weak in the world to confound the strong, mercifully grant that we who celebrate the heavenly birthday of your martyr, St. Agnes, may follow her constancy in the faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. So took 3,000 picked men from all Israel and went in search of David and his men in the direction of the wild boat crags. When he came to the sheepfolds along the way, he found a cave which he entered to relieve himself. David and his men were occupying the inmost recesses of the cave. David's servants said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your grasp. Do with him as you see fit. So David moved up and stealthily cut off an end of Saul's man mantle. Afterward, however, David regretted that he had cut off an end of Saul's mantle. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, as to lay a hand on him, for he is the Lord's anointed. With these words, David restrained his men and would not permit them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. David also stepped out of the cave, calling to Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked back, David bowed to the ground in homage and asked Saul, Why do you listen to those who say, David is trying to harm you? You see for yourself today that the Lord just now delivered you into my grasp in the cave. I had some thought of killing you, but I took pity on you instead. I decided I will not raise a hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed and a father to me. Look here at this end of your mantle which I hold. Since I cut off an end of your mantle and did not kill you, see and be convinced that I plan no harm and no rebellion. I have done you no wrong, though you are hunting me down to take my life. The Lord will judge between me and you, and the Lord will exact justice from you in my case. I shall not touch you. The old proverb says, from the wicked comes forth wickedness. So I will take no action against you. Against who are you on campaign, O king of Israel? Whom are you pursuing? 
a dead dog, or a single flea. The Lord will be the judge. He will decide between me and you. May he see this and take my part and grant me justice beyond your reach. When David finished saying these things to Saul, Saul answered, Is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. Saul then said to David, You are in the right rather than I. You have treated me generously while I have done you harm. Great is the generosity you showed me today when the Lord delivered me into your grasp and you did not kill me. For if a man meets his enemy, does he send him away unharmed? May the Lord reward you generously for what you have done this day. And now I know that you shall surely be king and that sovereignty over Israel shall come into your possession. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge, till harm pass by. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. I call to God the Most High, to God my benefactor. May he send from heaven and save me. May he make those a reproach who trample upon me. May God send his mercy and his faithfulness. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Please stand. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went up to the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom, whom he named Barnerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon of the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Kapag tayo ay tinatanggap sa isang trabaho, o di naman kaya ay meron tayong tinatanggap na tauhan o nag apply sa atin para magtrabaho, ito po ay isang senyales na nakikitaan tayo ng isang responsibilidad na kaya natin gawin o gampanan ang inaasahan sa atin, ang ina natin o di naman kaya yung kaya natin gawin. Halimbawa na lang po, kung ikaw po ay isang guro at nag apply ka sa isang eskwelahan para magturo, kapag po ikaw ay natanggap, ibig sabihin yung principal o director ng school 
ay nakikitaan ka ng isang potensyal na kung saan ikaw ay makakapagturo ng maayos sa eskwelahan at you can contribute to the growth of the school. Ganon din naman po sa ating buhay. Kung kayo po ay naghahanap ng isang tao na pwede niyo makasama pang habang buhay, syempre po, ang kukunin at hahanapin niyo po o pipiliin niyo po ay yung taong alam niyong maganda ang magiging epekto nito sa inyong buhay, makakatulong ito sa inyong paglago at makakatulong po ito sa inyong mga plano upang makimit niyo po ang inyong plano. Sino ba naman po dito ang gusto na ang kunin ay isang sakit sa ulo? Di barang pinalo niyo po ang sarili niyong ulo sa pader kapag po ganun. Kaya po di ba po, humahanap po tayo ng isang tao o ng mga tao na makakatulong sa atin. lalo lalo na po kapag po tayo ay merong mga plano sa buhay o misyon sa buhay. Sa ating ebanghelyo po sa araw na ito, makikita po natin na tinawag ng Diyos ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo ang labing dalawa. Siya po mismo ang pumili. Siya po mismo ang tumawag. Sabi nga po sa ating Ibanghelyo, Jesus went up to the mountain and summoned those whom He wanted. And they came to Him. Kung tatanungin po natin, ano kaya ang nakita ng ating Panginoon doon sa labing dalawa na iyon? Kung bakit niya po ito napili? Sino ba po kaya yung mga yon? Matalino ba po kaya sila? Hindi ko po alam. Hindi ko po masasagot. Magaling po kaya sila magsalita? Baka po. Guwapo ba po sila? Hindi rin po natin alam. Pero may nakita ang ating Panginoon sa kanila. Kaya po sila ay napili ng ating Panginoon. Kaya po sila tinawag ng ating Panginoon. At iyan po ay yung pagsagot ng oo ng labing dalawang iyon at pagsunod sa kanya. Dahil ibig sabihin, yung pong willingness ng taong iyon, ng mga taong iyon, ay handa silang mag-alay ng kanilang oras, ng kanilang buhay, para po sa misyon ng ating Panginoon, upang ipagpatuloy ang nasimulan ng ating Panginoon. Kaya nga po sabi po niya, He might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. Yun po ang plano ng ating Panginoon, yun po ang ginawa niya, kaya po ang tinawag po niya ay ang mga apostoles na kayang tumulong sa ating lahat, sa kanyang nasimulang misyon. Kaya po mga kapatid, our gospel for today tells us that all of us are also called to do the mission of the church. Lahat po rin tayo ay tinawag para po makasama po dito sa simbahang ito. Lahat po tayo ay pinili ng Diyos, inimbitahan ng Diyos upang sundin po siya para po saan? Para rin po tayo ay may gawin. Tayo po ay miyembro ng isang apostolic church. Ibig sabihin, bawat isa po sa atin ay may misyon na kailangan gampanin dito po sa simbahan natin. At ano po iyong misyon na iyon? Iyon ay ang misyon na kung saan ipakilala ipalaganap ang salita ng Diyos. Paano po natin gagawin? Baka sabihin niyo, Father, hindi naman po kami pare para po namin ma-preach ang ating Panginoon. Well, hindi naman po natin kailangan maging pare din para po walang mag-preach. Mas maganda rin po na isabuhay niyo po ang mga turo ng ating Panginoon. Dahil kung ganun po, kung kaya po natin isabuhay ang mga turo at aral ng ating Panginoon, doon po natin maipapakilala na mas maganda ang ating Panginoon. Doon po natin maipapakita sa kapwa natin kung sino ang ating Panginoon. Kaya po mga kapatid, kung kayo po ay isang tunay na Kristiyano, sana po ang ating Panginoon po mismo ang nabubuhay o namumuhay sa ating puso. Siya po ang gumagabay sa ating buhay para po tayo po bilang isang kristyano ay matatawag talagang tunay na kristyano na hindi lamang sa pamamagitan ng pangalan kundi sa salita at sa gawa. Dahil ang isang kristyano ay mararamdaman ng kapwa natin ang presensya ng Diyos sa ating buhay. At sa ganun po, yung misyon ng simbahan na ipakalat ang salita ng Diyos ay magagampanan po natin sa pamamagitan ng ating buhay. Kaya po mga kapatid, tayo po ay inaniyayahan ng ating Panginoon, hindi lamang po bilang isang miyembro, 
kundi meron po tayong responsibilidad na ipakilala ang Diyos, lalong-lalo na po sa mga hindi pa nakakakilala sa Kanya. At yun po ay sa pamamagitan ng ating buhay. Sana po, isa buhay po natin ng ating Panginoon at wag po natin baliwalain ang lahat ng natututunan at naririnig po natin aral ng ating Panginoon. Dahil ang Panginoon, ang isang tunay na Kristiyano ay Diyos ang namumuhay sa kanyang puso't isipan at nararamdaman ng kapwa natin ang presensya ng Diyos sa inyong buhay. Please all stand. As God's holy people call in different ways to spread the good news of the kingdom, we present our needs before our Father who cares for us. For every intention, we shall say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That those called in the church to lead the people of God may have the courage to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who seek God may find enlightenment and respond willingly to God's invitation to be with Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people may recognize the voice of Christ calling them to a life of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may receive comfort and strength from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may rest in the peace of Christ's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also include in our prayers the intentions of this Mass. Those people who are asking for our prayers, for your personal intentions, and for the, the people who are asking for our prayers, for those afflicted by the COVID-19, and for those who are sick, and for the frontliners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray and include in our prayers our departed loved ones, friends, and relatives. And for all the souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, when you call us in, this, in the events of everyday life, let your Spirit give each of us the strength to say, Lord, here I am. I come to do your will. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bless the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the, the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the offerings we bring in the celebration of Blessed Agnes win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their feet. To their endurance you grant firm soul. And in their struggle, the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, and we with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfold, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which shall be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, to guide with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his, his Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in our mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, to the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merry to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace.
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray that the forthcoming election may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together, deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord, from coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord, from dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord, from bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord, from threats, intimidation and perverse language deliver us lord let us pray together hear us lord hear us lord that conscience may always be our ultimate norm hear us lord that the common good may always be our highest goal hear us lord that human dignity may be respected all the time hear us lord that the poor and the weak may always have the priority Dear us, Lord, that genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political en engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray.
O God, who bestowed on blessed Agnes a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagdalo sa ating misa at asahan niyo po ang aming panalangin at ganun din po kami po sana ay panalangin din niyo po at sama-sama po tayo manalangin para po matapos na po ang pandemya ito. The Lord be with you and with your spirit and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ngayon po gagawin na po natin ang blessing of the sick and para po sa mga blessing ng mga rosaries and other religious articles. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will greatly, gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.